afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another Wednesday of Music Therapy Facebook Live, coming to you from Gillette Children's Specialty Healthcare in St. Paul, Minnesota. I'm Beth. And I'm Heath. Hello, hello, how do you do? How do you do? How do you do? How do you do? I am so excited for today. <gasps> Hello, Heath. How do you do? How do you do today? I'm also really excited for today. Pumped to show you guys a little bit more about what we do here at the hospital. So we are celebrating. We've got two big things to celebrate today. Mm -hmm. One is that we have now been doing our Facebook Live sessions for two full years. So we are so grateful to everyone for tuning Ooh. in and just being a part of our community. And thank you too to all the staff support that we've had here at Gillette. It's been amazing and we are happy to keep going. Mm -hmm. The second thing we are celebrating today is Minnesota Music Therapy Week. We have a proclamation from Governor Walls saying that this is Music Therapy Week in Minnesota. It uh, is aligned with our big regional conference that we, music therapy conference that we're having. And Beth is co-chairing that conference, which is pretty cool. Yeah, we've got 600 people. Just more than that, um, going to be do, <laughs> participating in this conference. So I'm really excited to be part of that. I'm excited to be part of music therapy here at Gillette. And we thought to celebrate, we'd talk a little bit about music therapy in general and what we do here at the hospital when we're not doing Facebook Live. Yeah. So we're going to start off with um, a little technique. It's called pattern sensory enhancement. So maybe we're going to back up but, though and say that music therapy has been here at Gillette oh, since like about it. 20, what did we say, 2012 or so. Um, Coral Karski was the first employed music therapist here and she did an amazing job of growing the program. So we've got Coral, we've got, I'm here, we've got Heath and we've got Julie who is another one of our awesome on-call music therapists. And yeah, hopefully you'll run into one of us if you happen to stop here at the hospital for whatever yeah. reason. Yeah, um, and we serve patients here at the hospital in all the inpatient units and the rehab unit. And we have limited availability for our outpatient Phelan clinic and outpatient clinic here at the hospital. Yeah, we usually do procedural support for those mm -hmm. um, when we're over at those clinics. And music therapy is, we, we have our own degree program. Uh, we often get asked, what's your training? So we go to get a four year degree um, at a college that is specifically in music therapy. That degree also includes a lot of uh, practicum hours. Do you remember the exact number of hours? It's 1,200 12, hours total. Yes. So that includes practicum and... And a six-month internship mm -hmm. that is full-time. We pass a board certification exam. That's a national exam. And uh, several states have licensure. We're working on it here in Minnesota. And... Yeah, if we think of... There, are, people get master's degrees, doctorate degrees in music therapy. I've got my master's. And we both actually were at the University of Minnesota studying music therapy. Yeah. Um, well, Beth, do you feel like taking a seat? I will this, take a seat. For this um, particular demonstration, we're, we're going to be demonstrating a few different techniques that we tend to use at the hospital. We've shown maybe a, you uh, a few of these techniques during our music therapy Facebook Lives, but these are some ones that are maybe a little bit more specific. Um, to certain situ situations. So if Beth was a patient and she was working on um, getting some strength back in her legs, um, I like to use this song, which employs the technique called pattern sensory enhancement. Basically, it just means the music tells, kind of tells you what to do. Um, so when the music goes higher, then that's when Beth is going to stand up. And when it gets low, is when she sits down. So it goes, um, I've got a song 
that goes like this. And we're just gonna start by patting your legs, waking them up. Yep, pat. Woo. Oh, the city is great, the city is grand. There are lots of tall buildings on a little piece of land. We all live up high on the 57th floor. And this is what we do when we go out the door. Ready, we go up the elevator, we go down the elevator, we go up the elevator, we go down. Elevator, we go down the elevator. We go up the elevator. We go down the elevator. It's <laughs> a good workout. A little bit of a workout, yeah. Way to go, Beth. <laughs> so, that's um, one technique that um, I like to use when we're working on strength. Um, another technique that I typically use a bit more with our patients who are on the rehab unit when we're working on. Um, working on using our arms. This is called therapeutic instrumental music play, I think. Um, <laughs> performance. Therapeutic <laughs> instrumental music performance. A lot of acronyms. They don't really matter. The idea is that we're using rhythm to get our limbs uh, motivated. And it's, there's a lot of research that suggests that um, rhythm really helps the brain um, structure how to get your body to move. Um, and move more efficiently. So incorporating music into these moves, movements can be really beneficial. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna start and we're gonna hit this drum. Yeah, then this one. Down by the bay, where the watermelons grow. Back to my home, I dare not go. For if I do, my mother will say, did you ever see a, can you think of an animal, Beth? Duck. A duck who bought some coffee with a buck down by the bay. Yeah, and that's the basic idea of that one. Yeah, thanks a lot, Beth. Yeah, Again. and well, he's getting set for this next one. One of the great things about music is we are an evidence-based profession, meaning that everything we do is research based and there are a few different uh, professional music therapy journals as well and this research suggests that uh, music affects all parts of the brain and so we've had just a lot of success using music one as a motivational tool but two as Heath was saying with the rhythm and the way the rhythm and the pitch and the different elements of the music work with your brain to help you uh, meet your goals. Yeah. And we love collaborating with other professionals here as well. We work a lot, Heath works particularly a lot with speech therapy and occupational therapy and- Physical uh, therapy. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I do a lot of co-treats with um, nursing, therapeutic recreation, child life, uh, respiratory therapy, and here we are. Yeah. All right. I'm going to have you take another seat, Beth. So in this next intervention, we're going to be focusing a bit on attention. So Beth, whenever I sing the word uh, Bonnie, I need you to play this drum. Okay. Can you say it? Say Bonnie as you hit it. Bonnie. All right. This one is called the ocean drum. And whenever I say the word ocean, you're going to hit the ocean drum. Go ahead and ocean. say ocean. That's right. This one is going to be the word bring, the tambourine. Bring. Bring. Yep. And this one's going to be me. Me. Bonnie. Bonnie. Ocean. ocean. Bring. bring. Me. me. Beth's gonna have to listen up. Whenever I sing those words, she's gonna have to play the right instrument that goes with them. And I'm gonna have to not focus on the pretty bells. <laughs> yeah, those are for later. <laughs> All right, here we go. My body lies over the ocean. Good job. My body lies over the sea. Oh, that works. My body lies over the ocean. Oh, bring my body to me. Ooh. Bring back, oh, bring back 
Oh, bring back my body to me, to me, yeah. Bring back, oh, bring back, oh, bring back my body to me. Play them all, go wild. Nice. <laughs> all right, that, that's great at it, I don't know. So and she's got good attention. And at music the therapy is never fun at all. Never. We're Wait. very serious. Um, <laughs> all right. We've got at least a, a couple more things that I wanted to talk about. Specifically, this is called music, musical neglect training. So sometimes we have patients who come in after they've had maybe a, a bump to the head, a brain injury, um, that causes their vision to be impaired. So that means sometimes they're not able to see on maybe their left side of uh, uh, the left side or the right side. Um, and we'll, I'll sometimes set up these bells in a way that encourages patients to, to um, look towards both sides. So we're going to, and, and the reason they do it is, or so Beth, basically, I, I'm just going to tell you to copy back what I play, OK? OK. All right. Um, so if, if, if Beth was a patient who couldn't see on this side, I might start here and go. <laughs> Beth, can you do that? Do. Yeah. OK. That's it, that's it, exactly. Some patients, if they have a hard time with it, they might only get and then they might think for a second and then look and realize that there's more to that, more to what they heard and finish it off. So that's called music neglect training. We got one more, one more technique for patients who are working more on speech. Um, Sometimes we have patients who come in after getting their head bump. You can stay there. <laughs> and, um, and, and they're not able to, to say much, and they're working on getting their speech back. So, so music is a great way to incorporate so many different parts of the brain and, and encourage those um, speech movements and to happen. Um, so for this song, I need you to just finish finish the blank. It goes A B C D E F G <laughs> H I J K L M N O P. Yeah, you get the idea. It's sort of like musical fill in the blank, but having that extra musical structure can be so so helpful for getting um, getting patients to to just get those words out. Um, yeah. I think that's about it for me. Beth, what do you got? All right. <laughs> so I'm just going to stay sitting for a second. There you go. <laughs> so he talked about some of the, um, the neurologic music therapy techniques that he uses with uh, the rehab patients who are here. I work more on the other inpatient units, the ortho orthopedic surgical unit, neurosciences, pediatric intensive care, and our adult unit. And so what I do is very different. I see patients who are needing um, some just normalization of the hospital experience. And we might do things like play instruments and sing songs. And um, I've got a number of musical books as well. And it may look like we're just playing or like I, some people will say, oh, it looks like you might be just entertaining. And, behind the scenes of my brain, there is an exact reason why I've picked an instrument or a book or uh, whatever it is that we're doing and thinking about the tempo and the volume and the song and the meter. There's so much to all the musical considerations that we make. So there's that. Sometimes we do songwriting um, to help process 
different um, emotions. And one of the things that I really love doing with patients, especially during procedural support, I will help patients kind of make it through the procedure. Sometimes it's casting, sometimes it's a blood draw or a dressing change, or sometimes an enema unpleasant but hey if you're singing let it go it might make it a little easier um, but one of the great things about singing is that you have to breathe to sing you can't sing without breathing and breathing we know has so many benefits for your body especially taking some of those deep breath, deep breaths and so sometimes i'll have patients breathe with me during a four count interval or I'll have patients just try to sing with me and the singing will help calm their body and if they're looking at me that's helping them not focus on what's happening with the rest of the procedure and they're focusing on the song and um, sometimes they might giggle or laugh while we're doing it and as long as they're not moving too much that's okay um, yeah so, one, uh, yeah, we're gonna do, uh, we're just gonna sing a little song together. Mm -hmm. So you can see some of the benefits of singing and moving. Singing motivates you to move too. Yeah. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Right. So another thing I do is help people um, who are feeling pain or anxiety and I help with relaxation. Um, I have training in guided relaxation and uh, guided imagery and music and so I know a number of different techniques. I can try some relaxation with you now. Just a brief thing. I hope no one actually falls asleep. Um, I've got training in a technique called music sedation, which one of the cool, that reminds me, one of the cool things uh, with music too and the relaxation of it and the procedural support is patients have been found to need fewer um, pain medications and um, anti-anxiety medications when they're using music. And sometimes they just don't even need to do the procedure over again. Like mm -hmm. sometimes the, the procedure gets botched the first time around and, and uh, ha including music the first time around can make it a lot more successful. Or a patient is really, really anxious for a procedure and they're tense and their body is tense and their body is not working with the physician or the provider. Um, you're too dense to be able to get a, a needle for uh, a blood draw. Mm -hmm. what have you. Uh, so, I would like you to sit comfortably. You are welcome to have your eyes open or closed, whatever feels comfortable to you. And just, as you sit there, take a nice deep breath in. Just focus in on your body. Notice what parts of your body feel relaxed and comfortable. And just take a deep breath. And out. And take one more deep breath. body and just be aware of any parts of your body that feel uncomfortable or pain. And just be aware of those. 
We're going to take a deep breath and let it out. Now, as we're thinking about those parts that are feeling uncomfortable or pain, I want you to picture them as a balloon. It could be a balloon of any color. Just think, so imagine that color in your mind of that balloon. It could be one of the flat balloons that you see like at a birthday party. It could be one of the shiny mylar balloons. And when you have a nice picture of that balloon in your mind, that balloon that represents any of the pain or the anxiety or tension you're feeling, we're gonna take a deep breath and blow the balloon far away from you. And it's not gonna go away in one breath and that's okay. So we're going to take another breath and let it out. Blow that balloon far away. And as you're thinking about your breathing and blowing that balloon away from you, just settle into your body. Again, eyes open or close, whatever works for you. exercise. Wiggle your fingers. When you're ready, if your eyes are closed, feel free to open them when you're ready. And I thank you for sharing this time with me. And I hope you're all still awake. <laughs> <laughs>
Did I put you to sleepy? Almost. <laughs> I'm still I'm still awake. And you know, it's kind of fun too. Sometimes I get parents who are tense or stressed and the parents will fall asleep right as their child is falling asleep. So <laughs> music therapy is for everyone. We have a very family centered approach here. Mm -hmm. Um, and I should say families, one of the things I really love is when families are present and sometimes you walk into a room and you can just kind of feel the tension of it. And then we start singing a song or playing some instruments together and all of a sudden you can feel it just dissolve and you see people smiling and interacting with each other. It's so great. So much fun. Mm -hmm. So one of the last things I'm going to talk about that I do here is uh, some of the work that I do on our pediatric intensive care unit. Uh, that is the unit where at times we see uh, patients who are at end of life and who are actively dying. Uh, sometimes it's a patient who has a medical condition in which they know that there is a decline and that is uh, coming. Sometimes it's a traumatic event and it was not anticipated at all. And either way can be very challenging for families. And I will be, av I am available. I work with our chaplains and our social workers and our child life specialists to help make that time just a beautiful time for families. Uh, sometimes it involves singing music that is significant to a family or to a patient, whether it be spiritual music or songs that were important. Uh, sometimes um, I will be with families and sing and provide musical and spiritual support as a patient passes away. And sometimes I will make a heartbeat recording of a patient. We, the hospital was very generous in investing, our integrative care committee was very generous in investing in a digital stethoscope that I use and I'm able to connect to my iPad and I can make a recording of a patient's heartbeat and then I will do some editing on the iPad, add in a song that's significant to the patient or to the family, and then produce the CD and send it to the family. And I think it's a really beautiful legacy item to have. And I will say too that it's a very uh, sacred time for a family when they're losing a loved one and I feel very very honored to be welcomed into that space and try to walk that path with them and I will send along a recording I would not want to play a recording of a patient's heartbeat uh, but I will make a copy of my own things up with one more song let's wrap it up with one more song all right you want to take her away yeah I feel like the music therapy song the song we ask get asked for the most is you are 
my sunshine. It so, fits so many circumstances and everybody seems to know it. So, yeah. <laughs> so please feel free to join along singing. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me Thank you so much for joining us and we'll look forward to seeing you next week. See ya.